Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at nested loops, in particular how to design a nested loop, and then also how to trace it using a logic table. So I'm going to get started with creating a nested loop, um, and what I want to do is I want to recreate this pattern of numbers here. So when we are designing a loop, in particular a nested loop, what we want to think about is what each of our individual loops are responsible for. So in this case, I'll have a doubly nested loop, so an outer loop and an inner loop, just two. Um, and I want one loop to be responsible for the numbers I want to print, and the other loop I want to be responsible for how many times I want to print them. Because if we have a look at this pattern here, um, we're just printing the numbers from one to five, um, but for each of these numbers, it's printed a different number of times. So if we were to just focus on printing out the numbers from 1 to 5, that's something that we can do quite easily with a regular loop. Um, so that would be a good place to start. So I know that I want to print the numbers from 1 to 5, so I'll have a variable called i that starts at 1. will continue to increase as long as, it, as long as it's less than or equal to 5 and then each time I want to plus one. And then I want to print that value to console. So this single loop here should effectively print the numbers one to five. Um, so now we want to design our inner loop, which will determine how many times each of these numbers are printed. Um, and I'm gonna do that using this table here I've created on the right. So first of all, I'm going to write down the values of i that I want to print or the numbers that I want to print. So I know I want to print the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Um, and then my other column has a look at the number of times I want to print each number. So if we go back to our pattern here, I want to print the number 1 5 times. I want to print the number 2 4 times. Number 3 twice. Sorry, number three, three times, number four, twice, and number five, once. So there are lots of ways to go about design, designing our inner loop. Um, lots of different ways to achieve it, but I find the easiest way to design it is to try and get the number of times that it's being printed in terms of our i variable. So um, for each of these, well, I want to print the number one five times, so I want to rewrite the number five um, in terms of one. So another way of writing the number five would be six minus one, because six minus one is five. Um, and now that I've done that, I've got a reference to my i variable. Um, so let's see how that pattern keeps with the rest of our combinations. Um, so when I've got the i value two, and I want to print it four times. So if I can rewrite the number four in terms of two, I know that four is equal to six minus two. So again, that's another i variable here. Um, and then I can continue. So I know that I can, well, three is equal to three, but I can also write three as six minus three. So now I've been able to identify a pattern here. So two can be rewritten as six minus four. And five can be rewritten as six minus one. Sorry, my mistake. One can be rewritten as six minus five. There we go. Um, so when it comes to loops, it's all about identifying patterns. Um, so I've identified a pattern here that when I do six minus the i value, I will get the number of times that I want to print it. So we know that these are all the same. So now that we've identified our pattern, we can say that for each value of i, we want to print that value six 
minus i amount of times. Um, so now we have a value for how many times we want to print our i value. Um, so that's what is going to be our inner loop. We need to design an inner loop that will run 6 minus i times. So we can say for int k is equal to 1, k must be less than or equal to 6 minus i, I'm going to plus 1 to k each time. Let's indent our code. And there we go, that works well. Um, and this isn't the only, only inner loop that we can use. As long as that inner loop runs 6 minus i times, um, then we're happy there. So we could do something like we start at 6, keep decreasing until we get to i, and we minus 1 each time. Oops, my maths was a bit wrong there. Greater than i. There we go. Um, yeah, so for this loop in particular, as long as this runs 6 minus i times, we're happy. So that's what nested loops is all about. It's about identifying the pattern um, and then splitting up the responsibilities between the outer and the inner loop.